Hello and welcome to Ember's Reading Room. Today we are staying within the land of serendipity with Morgan Mine, written by Stephen Cosgrove and illustrated by Robin James. Trust and understanding are the building blocks of friendship. Wow, by the time I got this book it was already on its 12th printing. Wow. In a period of six years. Uh, the original copyright is 1982. This book from the 12th printing is 1988. Mm. Dedicated to John and Jan Nelson. Their laughter rings true at Winterbrook Farm. Stephen. In a place beyond tomorrow, where sun shines just a little brighter, lies an emerald island where all things magical and real live together in perfect harmony. So it's in the future. It is here that the brightly colored butterflies flutter beneath the dancing mist of a cascading waterfall. It is here that the sun and moon come together to paint the sky the most amazing colors and hues. So time is all messed up here. Also, it's green. You know, what emerald means. In a far corner of the island, beyond where the eye can see, there is a small kingdom called the Land of Later. It isn't much as kingdoms go. Only a small castle nestled in the woods, with a rickety old drawbridge hanging by rusty chains. The moat, long ago, was filled in with dirt. Now flowers grow there in every color of the rainbow. Hmm. Very pretty, and you can definitely see all the flowers, though they're not detailed really they're kind of colored patches in the illustration yeah it almost looks like something out of rainbow bright hmm that's a good comparison the castle used to ring with laughter and voices of hundreds of people but long ago they went away to where no one knew I love how children's books can just do that yeah this happened no one knows yep kids parents died we don't know when the kid has no parents. The kid was just here. The only people that live there now are an aged king and his beautiful young daughter, the princess. Aged king, young daughter. Okay. Yeah, I can see how that works. Because she lived alone, the princess didn't have anyone to play with. Mm. Sounds like another princess we read about. Day in and day out, she would wander the halls of the castle, looking for something to do. Once in a while, she would sit in one of the windows with her legs dangling out, daydreaming of princes, paupers, and dewdrops. Why dewdrops? Perhaps because of the flowers? Hmm. The princess was used to having her own way all of the time. When things didn't go just exactly right, she would stomp her foot and twist her face into an ugly pout. Also, like another book we read. Yes. Once, she chased a golden butterfly high into the branches of an old apple tree. When she got to the very top, she took a big swipe at it with her net and missed by nearly a mile. She was so mad that she stomped her foot, slipped on the branch, and almost fell to the ground. The princess had the very good fortune of catching her dress on a limb far below and wasn't hurt. She would have hung there nearly forever if her father, the king, hadn't gently set her down. Princess, he said, if you would only have a little patience and wait, the butterfly would come to you. Oh, pooh, she said as she stomped her foot and pouted her pout. I don't have to wait for anything. And with that, she stormed off into the castle. If it's the derelict kingdom, how does she have the luxury and the life that would have made her this kind of spoiled? We don't know when the people left. Hmm. Also, tennis shoes? Yeah, those are quite modern shoes she's wearing. And a nice lavender dress. Well done branches. Still kind of, I wouldn't say splotchy, but less defined yellow flowers in the background with the grass, which is actually quite well-defined. Mm -hmm. But we did have very well-defined flowers on the previous page, framing the window. Yep. The window kind of reminds me of the window that Princess Zelda is looking through in the 64 version of The Legend of Zelda. I don't know why I said 64 version, be uh, 
I mean the Ocarina of Time. The next day, as she was chasing another butterfly through the forest, she saw the most magnificent creature she had ever seen. He looked like a horse, and would have been a horse, of course, if it had not been for a large spiraling horn that grew out from his head. Gazed in amazement as the unicorn gently munched the lush clover that grew in patches between the trees. Come here, unicorn, she demanded. At the sound of her voice, the unicorn looked at her once, swished his tail twice, and galloped off into the forest. The princess stomped her foot and pouted, then raced into the forest. Whoop. I have a feeling someone's going to get lost. I have a feeling someone's going to learn a lesson. Of course. I don't know why, but Starlight's voice popped into my head. She followed the unicorn's hoof prints, and little by little, she began walking in places where she had never walked before. And oh, the wondrous sight she saw. There were manatees and manatos, dragons with gossamer wings, creatures of magic and dreams come true. The princess walked farther into the forest and higher into the mountains of the land of later. She walked until she came to the edge of the most beautiful meadow in all the world. The princess looked around and just knew that this was the place where a unicorn would live. With flowers all around, she sat at the edge of the meadow and waited. She didn't have to wait long before she heard the soft thud, thud, thud of hooves. She looked, and there before her, in the middle of the meadow, was the unicorn. He tossed his glittering mane and reared high into the air to touch a butterfly. Then with a kick and a snort, he raced about in total abandon. That's a very nice illustration. The unicorn has fetlocks. I, at least that's what I call them, the fur near the hooves. And it's up in the classic rearing pose, balancing on one back foot. Going after the butterfly, you can see the little girl in the background. All very nicely illustrated. And so are the background trees. And of course, very good muscle definition on the horse. Now, the princess had spent most of her life trying to catch butterflies and the like. So she thought she knew how to catch a unicorn, too. Because they're so similar. Yeah, they're all mystical razors. You know, butterflies and unicorns. From a nearby thicket, she dragged twigs and branches into the meadow. When all the materials were in place, she carefully built a very tall fence. Satisfied that her corral would hold the wildest of beasts, she quickly hid behind a clump of bushes and waited. It didn't take long before the unicorn wandered into that end of the meadow. He investigated the corral, but refused to go in. The princess was so mad that she jumped up, stomped her foot, and twisted her face into an ugly pout. With that, the unicorn gave a snort, and with a whip of his tail, he pranced to the other end of the meadow. Hmm, yeah, that wouldn't hold anything. Just annoy some people. Yeah, the walls that Munkin built were taller than this. Mm -hmm. But she is just a little girl, and they were horses, mm -hmm. ponies which those words were used interchangeably in that book. Oh, poo, said the princess as she watched him run away. She was so mad that she sat with a thump on a clump of grass. She cried, kicked her feet, and even tried to hold her breath. But the only thing that happened was her face turned blue. There are a lot of very nice drawings in this book. And the girl is well rendered too. The bow on her back, the lavender dress, the golden hair, and the horse galloping off in the distance wouldn't really call that golden. More of a medium brown with blonde highlights. Mm. After a while, she realized that pouting wasn't going to get her any closer to the unicorn. She sat and sniffled and tried to think of what to do. Then, she remembered what her father had always said. Princess, if you would only have patience and wait, all things would come to you. He's never going to let me catch him, she thought. But maybe if I'm patient and wait, at least I might make friends with him. With that, she began picking all the purple buds of clover that she could find. When she had gathered all that her arms could carry, she staggered to the center of the meadow and laid the clover gently down. She stepped back 15 paces or so and waited. Hmm, those are very nicely rendered clovers. Also, they are a slightly lighter lavender than her dress. 
Yeah, no color reuse there. Mm -hmm. The unicorn could not resist the smell of the plump, delicious clover. He inched closer and closer, keeping a wary eye on the little girl. Finally, by stretching his neck and twisting his lips, he was able to get just a little bite. He stopped, looked around, prepared to escape if the little girl made a move, and then returned to munching the tender buds. The princess stood very still as the unicorn ate more and more of the clover. Even when she had to scratch her nose, the unicorn didn't run away. Very nice illustration. I guess that's her scratching her nose. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the unicorn's just standing there staring at her going, Are you going to do anything? Munch, 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 munch. After the unicorn finished eating, he didn't run away. Instead, he stood there just looking at the princess. And the princess stood there just looking at him. I looked at him. He looked at me. I looked at him. him. <laughs> uh, if you know who that is, put it in the comments below. <laughs> hmm she thought. What other gift could I give him that would gain his trust and his friendship? Ah! she exclaimed as his ears perked up. After a fine meal, everyone needs a little dessert. Mmm, dessert. With her skirts billowing behind her, she ran to the end of the meadow and picked a handful of sweet-smelling honeysuckle flowers. When she had gathered the sweetest of the sweet, she walked very slowly back to where the unicorn waited. With her arms stretched out, she inched closer and closer to him. He was as nervous as could be and wanted to run away, but the honeysuckle smelled so good. The unicorn craned his neck toward her outstretched arm and finally got a tiny nibble of the honeysuckle. Yeah, it's a very nice drawing. He's like, uh... Uh, uh, almost just a little bit further. <laughs> little by little and bit by bit, the princess was able to move closer to the magnificent creature. Soon, she was close enough to reach up and gently pet his silvery mane. Finally, when the unicorn was sure that all she wanted was to share her love, he lowered his mighty horn and the princess gently stepped up and climbed onto his back. Although it had taken nearly all day, the princess and the unicorn became friends through trust, understanding, and a sweet-tasting vine. Hmm. Very nice illustrations. All the detail went to the important parts that you should be focusing on, the girl and the unicorn. The backgrounds were very nicely done. Not super detailed, but like I said, all the detail went to the important figures. Yeah, but, you know, that helps with framing them. It's where your focus is supposed to be. Mm -hmm. From that day forward, whenever she could, the princess would go to the meadow to watch the unicorn play. Sometimes, if the sun was shining just right, and if the honeysuckle was especially sweet, he would let her ride on his back, and they would try to catch the wind. Hmm. Wind's kind of hard to catch. Yes. At least they're having fun. Yes. Also, she lost the sneakers because now she's riding bareback and barefoot. That she is. If you have to pout just to get your way, remember the land of later and a lesson learned one day. Ending with Morgan and the princess curled up laying down together in the forest surrounded by patches of daisies. The unicorn's name wasn't mentioned in this one, so it's mentioned in the next book? It's in the title. Morgan Mine? Yeah. I don't remember what order I originally read these in as a kid. I just noticed something. On the cover, you actually see the girl have a little classic princess hat, but she's never shown with that in the book. No, she isn't. And it's very blue. It goes more with her ribbon on the dress than the dress itself. But she does have the sneakers. Yep. So what did you think? Yeah, I read these 50 million times, so it's a lot like how I remember it. But just like the Flutterby books, with the Morgan books, it's like, where's the connection? Is it always the same unicorn and the same princess? And really, is it always the same unicorn? Because not all the books have the princess. Hmm. Well, since I haven't read them, I have no idea. Oh. 
we can figure it out together. Mm-hmm. There's plenty more where that came from. Yes, yes, I have both more and fewer of uh, the Serendipity books than I thought. And this has been Morgan Mine, written by Stephen Cosgrove, illustrated by Robin James. Thank you for listening. If you enjoyed this, please like, subscribe, comment, share. Check out other videos in this series, the series as in Serendipity or the series as in Ember's Reading Room. Also, you can check out other playlists and content on the Lux Analysis channel overall. Interested in finding a copy of this book for yourself? Look below for an Amazon link. If it's in print, we'll try to have it for you. Just feel like shopping? Check out the Ebates link. Sign up and get cash back for purchases at stores you probably already shop at. Amazon and Ebates are not sponsors of or any way affiliated with Ember's Reading Room or any content of the Lux Analysis channel.